Hello and welcome to Daily Current Affairs by Neo IAS. So today on 19th September 2019, our topics for discussion are National Recruitment Agency, then Poliomyelitis, then National Investment and Infrastructure Fund, Waste Management Accelerator for Aspiring Women Entrepreneurs, MapEda Program and the previous year question revision series. So let's move to our first topic that is National Recruitment Agency. So here the news is that uh, a plan for a new agency to handle exams for government recruitment, it gets ministry note. Okay, so this is the news. So here I uh, will tell more details about the news. The first thing is that first you have to know about the objective. So uh, its main objective is to Streamline the recruitment of Group B. Group B consists of non gazetted officers and Group C means non technical and also clerical posts in the uh, government along with various equivalent recruitment in public sector banks. Okay, so this is its main objective. And um, so, uh, as I said, a new national recruitment agency they will be set up in order to conduct the common eligibility test that is CET common eligibility test for all this competitive examination in which an estimated 2.5 crore candidates appear annually clear. So uh, this NRA uh, they will conduct preliminary examinations for all this recruitment which are at present which are being conducted by the SSC and the IBPS okay. So, this NRA, they will subsequently forward the list of qualifying candidates to the respective recruiting agencies in order to conduct the mains examinations, clear. So, as a whole, we can say the basic idea behind this proposal is to shortlist the qualifying candidates through a common eligibility test before sending them for the mains examination clear. So, uh, next you have to know why it is proposed. So, as I said the base thing is that to streamline the recruitment process on subordinate rank posts in the government that is the first thing and the next one to reduce the burden of SSC and the IBPS among others from holding the preliminary recruitment exams which is an intensive or which is an extensive exercise clear. So, these uh, for these two reasons it is being proposed, we can say so. And here you have to remember one thing that is the proposed agency, however, they will not be in charge for the recruitment of probationary officers in banks, clear. That point you have to keep in mind, clear. Then, so and that is all regarding first topic, let us move to second topic that is poliomyelitis or polio. So, the related news is that on August 21st, 2019, uh, Nigeria, okay, so the Nigeria crossed an important milestone in the eradication of polio when it successfully completed it three successive years without a single case of wild polio virus, okay. So, this is the main news. So, first you have to know about poliomyelitis. We know the polio, it is a highly infectious viral disease and usually or mainly it affects the young children under 5 years of age and you know uh, this polio virus, it invades the nervous system and it can cause irreversible paralysis in a matter of hours, okay. And uh, the mode of transmission, so the transmission uh, it is that the virus it is transmitted by person to person and it is spread mainly through the fecal oral route or we can say it is spread less frequently by a common vehicle that is uh, either it can be a contaminated food or a contaminated water and what happens it gets multiplies in the intestine from where it can invade the nervous system and it can even cause paralysis clear. So, this is the mode of transmission of the virus. And the initial symptoms of polio, it includes fever, fatigue, headache, vomiting, then we can say stiffness of the neck region 
and even the pain in the limbs. Okay. And in a small proportion of cases what happens? The disease it causes paralysis. Okay. Which is often permanent. Clear? So, uh, if you ask for the prevention, there is no cure for polio. We can say so. But it can only be prevented by immunization. Okay. So, there comes the importance of immunization in the case of polio. So, here you have to know that there are six different vaccines to stop polio transmission. Okay. They are first one is the inactivated polio vaccine or the IPV. Then the trivalent oral polio vaccine that is TOPV. Then uh, bivalent oral polio vaccine that is BOPV. And monovalent oral, uh, oral polio vaccine. Okay. Then first uh, you have to know about inactivated polio vaccine or the IPV. So, this uh, IPV it protects against the polio virus type 1, 2 and 3. And talking about the next one that is a trivalent oral polio vaccine. It protects against the polio virus types 1, 2 and 3. And following the OPV switch in April 2016, you have to remember that the TOPV is no longer in use. That you have to remember. And the next category that is a bivalent oral polio vaccine, uh, it protects against the polio virus type 1 and 3. Okay. And this monovalent oral polio vaccine, it consists of MOPV 1, 2 and 3. It gives protection against each individual type of polio virus. Okay. So, that is about the vaccination and the global polio eradication initiative. Okay. So, you all know WHO, it is a partner in the Global Polio Eradication Initiative and we can say uh, the largest private public partnership for health is this WHO and uh, it aims or it has reduced the polio by 99 percentage, clear. So, the initiative's goal uh, is to reach every last child with polio vaccine and also to ensure a polio free world for future generation. Clear? That you have to remember regarding the global polio eradication initiative. Okay. So, uh, our next topic is national investment and infrastructure fund. So, the news is that our foreign funds take over Indian road assets. Clear? This is the news. That is the foreign funds had taken over the Indian road assets. So, here first you have to know about National Investment and Infrastructure Fund. So, you all know it is an investor owned fund manager and it is mainly it is anchored by the government of India in collaboration with leading global and domestic institutional investors. Clear? So, this uh, uh, National Investment and Infrastructure Fund, its mandate includes investing in areas such as energy, transportation, then even housing, water, then waste management and other infrastructure related sectors in India. Clear? So, here you have to know about its functioning. So, it is being uh, operationalized by the establishing three alternative investment funds, okay, under SEBI regulations. And what happens is that the proposed corps of NIIF, it is 40,000 crores and it is being funded by 49 percentage of it is funded from government of India. So, what about the rest? The rest has been funded from the strategic anger partners. So, the strategic anger partners, it, uh, it includes or it can be even the overseas sovereign, then the quasi sovereign or it can be even the multilateral investors or even the bilateral investors. Clear? So, next here you have to know about the NIIF and its three fund. So, currently the NIIF currently manages three funds each with its distinctive investment mandate. So, they are the master fund, then fund of fund and strategic investment fund. So, uh, the first one it is a master fund, 
here you have to remember is that this fund it, it mainly it focuses on creating a scalable sexual platform in core infrastructure and also you have to remember that it is in collaboration with strong and reputed operating and financial partners clear then about the next fund that is the fund of funds you have to remember uh, here the fund is focused on anchoring and investing in in uh, investing in credible and also in reputed third party managers with a strong track records across diversified sectors within infrastructure services and allied sectors clear and about the third one that is a strategic investment fund uh, here it is a fund which is focused on investing in strategic assets and projects with longer term horizon across various stages of development clear so this nif it currently it manages these three funds each with its distinctive investment mandate clear then so our next topic it is waste management accelerator for aspiring women entrepreneurs so or in short we can say uh, wave summit 2019 so why it came in news because uh, um, our union human resource development minister actually he launched several initiatives of all india council for technical education in new delhi okay so that's why uh, it came in news so here you have to know about some terms that is uh, what is a margadarshan and margadarshak and first you have to know about the facilitation through margadarshan and margadarshan okay so simply we can say it's an initiative in which the topmost institution okay the, this um, this topmost institution they will mentor the other institutions so that they can improve their rankings and also we can say they can follow best practices for the mentor institute clear so here first you have to know about uh, what is a margadarshan so under this scheme or uh, um, so those type of institution which is having good accreditation record or uh, highly performing institutions okay they are supposed to mentor relatively newer 10 to 12 potential institutions clear so here the best practices in teaching and learning process it is being followed in mentor institute they are diffused to the mentee institutions clear and also uh, you have to remember that these institutions they are also provided uh, a funding up to 50 lakhs per institutions over a period of 3 years and this funding it is being provided in installments for carrying out various activities like trainings conducting workshop then even the conferences and also travel that's about this mark darshan then about mark darshan under the scheme the mentor teacher or this margadarshak uh, who are either a serving or a superannuated but uh, who are willing and motivated with good knowledge or accreditation and who can devote adequate time to make required visit to these institutions are being identified okay so first of all such persons or this margadarshak or the teacher is identified and this mark darshak they, they will regularly visit to this mentee institution and sometimes they stay on their campus and also guide them for their improvement in quality so that these institution they will be able to get accreditation by nba clear so if you ask for the tenure of this mark darshak or the teachers it is initially it is for 6 months and it is been extendable on year on year basis clear then next you have to know about the 360 degree feedback of faculty so according to the aicte 7th pay regulation it defines the process of collecting the 360 degree feedback data that will be submitted by the education institutes so basically you have to remember is that it starts by first establishing a data framework Uh, that will map the teacher student and the subject and even the course in order to capture the data at source through online mechanism clear 
So, as the process begins by self-reporting of the teaching process and other contribution to the society by the teacher themselves. Okay. So, here uh, what happens is that the head of the department where this teacher works, he would also rep uh, report the departmental activities performed by the teacher. And also you have to remember that the principal of the institute, he would further add institute activities and the annual confidential report for every teacher. Clear? So, this is the 360 degree feedback of the faculty. And next you have to know about the uh, uh, WAVE Summit 2019 or the Waste Management Accelerators for Aspire Women Entrepreneurs. So, we can say it will be the largest gathering of young women students in order to promote entrepreneurship in waste management and also we can say it aims to provide alternatives to single use plastic carry bags. Okay. So, here uh, two institutions that is Indian Institute of Waste Management and All India Council for Technical Education, they will be registering the interested participation and also they will guide them to connect from Startup India to Standup India. Clear? So, the theme is make your own bag. So, here we can say it uh, basically it aims to empower the women to take up income generation activity and also entrepreneurship in waste management through making a business out of this record creating concept. Okay, so here you have to remember the theme that is make your own bag. So that's about this wave summit 2019. So today in current affair capsule we will be dealing with two small topics. The first one is Tatpar app. So the related news is that the Delhi police it launches a new one stop app that is this Tatpar app. So, through this app, the citizens, they can navigate the nearest police station or the prepaid taxi booth very easily and the user, uh, user will be provided with directions as well as contact details of the station house officer who is concerned. Okay. And also, another highlight of this app is that the SOS button uh, which is provided on the home screen. Okay. So, that about, uh, that's about this Tatpath app. Then our second topic is Northern Zonal Council. So, the news is that the Union Minister for Home Affairs, he will be chairing the 29th meeting of the Northern Zonal Council at Chandigarh. So, first you have to know about Zonal Councils. You know the Zonal Councils, they are the statutory bodies and they are being established by the Act of Parliament that is the State Reorganization Act of 1956. So, this act, it divided the country into five zones. So, here you have to know uh, which all states comes under the Northern Zonal Council state. So, uh, you know the states they are Haryana, then Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Rajasthan and the National Capital Territory of Delhi and Chandigarh. Okay, so these states come under the Northern Zonal Council states. Okay, so today in MAPEDA program, uh, we will be continuing with the World Heritage Site. In that, under natural site, we will be dealing with Western Guts. So, you know the Western Guts, this mountain range, it is located on the western part of India and it is listed as one of the world's biodiversity hotspots. And therefore, it is listed under the natural category of UNESCO World Heritage Sites in India. Okay. So, the, basically there are 39 properties in total that are included within this property uh, which includes wildlife sanctuary, forest reserves, natural parks, etc. So, the western guts, you know, it is scattered from mouth of river Tapi to Cape of Kanyakumari. That means for a distance of uh, 1600 kilometers. So, we can say its average height is 1200 meter and is uh, you know it is not a real hill range but rather it is a ridge side in the peninsular plateau. And if you compare both western guts and eastern guts, you know the height of western guts it increases from north to south whereas the height of eastern guts 
it increases from south to north. Okay. And the western guts, they are also more continuous than the eastern guts. And also, you know, it also has an exceptionally high level of biological diversity and endemism. That is why it is recognized as one of the world's eight hottest hotspots of biological diversity. That point you have to remember. And also, the forest of the site, it includes some of the best representatives of non-equatorial tropical evergreen forest anywhere and uh, it is it acts, as, it acts as home to at least 325 globally threatened flora, fauna, then some types of exceptional categories of birds, amphibians, fish species, etc. Okay. So, here you can see the map of western guts. So, that is uh, in particular you can see the northern western guts, central western guts, the nilgiris and the southern western guts. So, uh, in the last class we were dealing with Nanda Devi and the Valley of Flowers National Park and I asked you to find out the year in which it was declared as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. So, guys the correct answer is the Nanda, Nanda Devi and the Valley of Flowers National Park. It was declared as a World Heritage Site by the UNESCO in the year 1988 and 2005 respectively. Okay, 1988 and 2005. So, today your question is, uh, you have to find out the year in which Western Guts was declared as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. So, please find the answer and comment it in the comment section. And today in prelims question revision series, uh, our question is, the lower Gangetic Plain is characterized by humid climate with high temperature throughout the year. So, which one among the following pairs of crop is the most suitable for this region and our options A, paddy and cotton, B, wheat and jute, C, paddy and jute and D, wheat and cotton. Okay. So, here you know the low and the delta plains of Ganges and Brahmaputra rivers, they are often they are characterized by swamps and sundarbans. Okay. So, people uh, out there, they will be growing paddy and jute. Okay. And also, uh, you know, paddy it is grown mostly in the Bihar and jute in West Bengal. And talking about wheat, we know it is a rabi crop and it is mainly, it has been grown in Northern India. And about cotton, it is grown in Central India. So, hence by considering all this, we can conclude by saying that uh, our answer will be C, that is paddy and jute. So, our answer is C. So, guys, uh, that is all for today's session and if you have any doubt, please comment it in the comment section. Thank you for listening.